as you mentioned. Uh, we've got a pretty uh, aggressive guy right here in front of us. We defined the scenario as probably all the traffic jam up. Um, but as you mentioned, we've got all the cameras, so we're running on multiple GPUs, so it's a scalable system. As cars get more and more sensors, more cameras, more LIDARs, we're going to need the horsepower of multiple GPUs. And we're showing that to you right here. Okay, so we could do, of course, we could simulate daylight scenario, let's simulate other scenarios. Okay, let's, uh, why don't we turn the lights out and go to night. So here's the same setup, only now we're doing all the dynamic lighting, so the headlights of the cars, the the light posts that are lighting the uh, road, the lights under the bridge as we drive over here, these are all dynamic, real-time lights. And, and the, the key here is that the, the fidelity of the simulation has to be sufficiently high that the sensor stack, all the software that we create, would just operate as they would in real life. That's exactly right. Right? So, so, and every one of the sensors needs to have GPU associated with it to, to generate its, per, its view of the universe, its view of the world that it's in. And so, so today we're simulating with four GPUs, with four cameras, but obviously we have the ability to spawn off a whole large number of GPUs. So, so if, you have, if you have eight LiDAR systems around your car, you have eight cameras around your car, you have six radars, we have the ability to generate all of that and feed that information into our sensors. And if we are successful in doing that, our artificial intelligence network, all of the network, all the software that we ran, that we developed, should just work. So Mark, let's turn that on. That's right. Oh, oh. Okay, so let's, uh, here we go. Now this is what we're, the, our drive stack is seeing on Drive DX. This is all the detection of the cars in the, in the world, the lane detection you see going on. Uh, and we've been self-driving this whole time, by the way. So as we ran into that little traffic jam, the uh, Drive DX detected it and slowed down and, and kept us safe. And notice we're detecting all the cars, we're detecting all the lanes. But here's the amazing thing. Earlier, the video that you saw, where real cars in the real world, we didn't change one line of code iota. The code is exactly the same code that was developed by the engineers. We, of course, copied it over to send it over to this data center, and it's running on exactly the same drive PX, drive Xavier, and drive Pegasus computer that we would drive in the car. And as a result, it's exactly the same sensor response. And this, the perception, the localization, the planning stack all work exactly the same way. And then you're at the end of your... So we reached the end of that scenario. Can I show you another one? Yeah, show me another one. Okay. So let's switch to the other system. So this is one of the beautiful things in virtual reality. We could create whatever scenario we want. And as you know, in test car driving, you could go days, months, weeks, and never run into a weird scenario. So there's so uh, you can create all kinds of strange and cornered conditions in virtual reality. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, sorry. Uh, so the same uh, adversarial driver just came through, uh, and now uh, we found one of San Jose's finest uh, is in pursuit of him. You so see the, the cop coming up in the back? Oh, yeah. The policeman coming up on the back? And it's coming up on the side. There you go. So you come, and of course, all the dynamic lighting, so you see the red and the blue lights light up the world. Uh, some of that strobing effect could affect the sensor, so we need to make sure we're modeling that correctly. That's really, that's really terrific. And so, one, the first is to recreate virtual reality in all kinds of weather conditions and day and night conditions. It has to be, it has to have the fidelity and the performance that basically simulates reality. Two, that simulation of reality has to be so high and the computer itself has to be able to run the original unchanged software so that we can test everything as is inside a virtual reality world. And when it passes that, then we can take it and put it into the car completely unchanged. We just OTA directly into the car and it should just work. And then third, we could use it to create extreme corner rare scenarios and it's completely repeatable. Every single time that police car shows up exactly the same way. And so we could have the ability, if we, re, repeatability engineers could debug systems. That's right. These three fundamental capabilities oh, are made it, possible. We call this drive <laughs> That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Daly.